Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to Pods of the Multiverse Season 2. We are an unofficial D&D podcast. We play 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Scala, and I will be portraying the world of Ravnica. And with me, as always, my three dear friends playing the characters navigating that world. My name is Jeppy, and I play Illipel, the master of sleep magic. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking forgot about that. <laughs> rip, rip all of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm Jimmy. I play Clork, the goblin, who's not here to make friends. And don't you forget about it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't forget about don't it. Forget don't it. forget it. Don't forget it. So good. <laughs> And I'm Andy. I play Alwyn, the ice knife whipping, ooze slaying druid. Uh, as always, we do thank you for listening. And if you're enjoying what you're hearing, just like to remind you all to engage with us and rate and review our podcast just so we can get to the ears of more people who might enjoy it just like you. And if you want to listen to more of us babbling on about our own content, check out our Patreon, because we're about to record two table talks. And they're going to be pretty fun. We're going to talk about how uh, effective Illipel's sleep spell was in the previous episode. <laughs> it was very effective. Or how deadly ochre jellies are in level two combats. CR99. Yes, indeed. CR99. That's me, Killer DM. And without further shilling, let's uh, get into the episode. All right, let's do the weekly recap quiz show where the game was last week and the points don't matter. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) So we prevented a shakedown of a local shopkeeper in the rubble belt. Kennens. Kennen, yes. Martin spilled some information. We're looking for possibly an elf with frog-like qualities. So we decided to hit up the Simic, ask about that. Yeah, so we... We're stymied off by someone at the like research kind of facility place thing. Goal of and all. Then, yeah. And then uh, what else? Uh, that, that was they were they were difficult to deal with. You uh, skipped past uh, the High Tower Hotel. No, no, that's next. Yeah, I yeah. Didn't skip past nope. Them. Excuse me. No, no that, that happened, happened the night, the night before. before. Wait, really? <laughs> Clearly, you were not paying yeah. attention. Wow. No, no, no. Yeah, that's right. Because okay. Too yeah, busy yeah. fucking talking. Drinking Blowing water. shit out your ass. Th- your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing ice cubes into a water bucket, being loud. <laughs> Burping on <laughs> dice rolls. Yeah. Um, that's right. That was the next day after we got a night's rest. Illipel generously paid for the rooms. Yeah, and missed out and on there an was a, epic there bonding was a, moment between <laughs> between yeah, Alvin and Clark. Yeah. And, you know, Clark was like, yeah, we'll put it on their tab. And didn't even bother. Uh paying for my drink, which was a little shitty after Illipel bought the rooms. That's hey, not you, part of the job description. Hey, you get what you get, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and then we went to the research lab. Things got a little dicey. Things were not looking too great. We yeah, got I, sent, I, we got I, sent I, I air, oh, Alwyn, still do Alwyn not like not this like, gullible like, yeah, guy. <laughs> Alwyn does not like where this is going at all because we're going to go do a sh- we're going to do a shakedown now. Like we stopped the shakedown and it ends with us on our way to do a shakedown. We'll fucking see. Right. We fought some goop and we killed it. We did a really <laughs> really really us. bad yeah, job. We, we did a very we bad got job. Up by the classic Every, ooh, Everybody had first dragon quest everybody monster had some of slime. Fucking <laughs> Awful yeah. rolls, dog shit yep. rolls all around. Oh yeah, the goop bad rolls did all around. Proved to be more difficult yep. than perhaps anticipated. I will say, Clark did not take any damage in that combat, though. Fucking thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and then we met Lana the Gorgon. Right, and now you're with Lana the Gorgon. So these are like uh, mythological Gorgons, right? This is a uh, Gorgon with snake hair. This is a Medusa, also known as a Gorgon. Called Gorgons on Ravnica, not to be confused with the Monster Manual Gorgon, their hair is not actually snakes like it might be on mm-hmm. Theros. Instead, they're uh, like snake-like tendrils. Um, okay. But we're calling them Gorgons. Yeah. Got it. All about those literal snake heads on yeah. Theros. Right. Uh, Andy, when you first wrote your character backstory, I was definitely picturing like the big metal bull. Nope. 
organ. Yeah. This makes a lot more sense. Thought it would. <laughs> so yes, she has taken note of your somewhat battered condition and offered you some rest and some tea, seeming to recognize Alwyn as she sort of leads you over to some rotting stumps. Sorry, if I could just squeak in before that. As we're walking over, I'll say, Forgive me. I know you know my mother, but I can't say I remember you. Well, uh, I haven't seen you since you were... She makes a gesture indicating half her height. But your mother and I are friends, and we stay in contact, but I don't blame you for not remembering me I, again. It was many years ago. You, you've grown into quite the handsome young man. Thank you. I hide a little under my hood and say, Thank you. Thank you for your hospitality. It was quite an endeavor to get here. She looks back at the tangle. Yes, that's a problem for everyone, but I'm glad you were able to make it over safe. So yes, who are you? Uh, Alwyn's companion. My name is Illipel, and it is a pleasure to meet you. I'm Clark. So, what brings this motley band down here? Looking back over to Illipel and then again back to Clark, I say, Well, we're on Guild Pact business, and that business led us to Simic, of all places, to someone named Golivol. I don't know if that name means anything to you. Oh, yes. The fine elf doing some sort of genetic research on the other side of this cavern, uh, making it impossible for either of us to get anything done. You can see the results of their efforts. She, again, gestures to the great mass of unkempt plant matter that you have just journeyed through. Clearly the result of these two incompatible nature magics interacting with each other. Uh, creating this dangerous rotten, growing out of control, this whole mass of ferns and vines and fungus. I have been back and forth through the inner city plenty of times, and that... Well, even that stretch there caught me off guard. So, if Golival sent you, I take it they want me to move. You got it. Well, first, what is the history with you and Golival? Well, it's not very complicated. Both sort of set up here on opposite sides of the cavern, right around the same time, and sort of as our efforts grew, they intersected with each other and blossomed out of control. So it's a standard war for territory. That's... I've brokered many a deal before in such a similar structure. Your assessment is not incorrect, I'm afraid to say. That is exactly what they are seeking. To be quite plain with you, we are in a situation that requires their compliance. We're not going to ask you to leave. I'll make sure of it. Well, I... Uh... Yeah, but, uh... This place belongs to you just as much as it does to them. The kettle starts to boil, and she pours some tea for each of you into these crude wooden cups and passes it around. I appreciate the courtesy, first and foremost. <laughs> and while I do deeply and humbly believe in the sentiment of my compatriot here, Alwyn, I believe we do need to think through the logistics of the situation. Now, call me an optimist. And I will tell you that, yes, things have worked out for me historically. I lean over to Clark because as they're speaking, and I say, poverty, and Do you honestly believe I what they're say saying? Things working out for me of course not. Always a stroke of <laughs> <laughs> let, let them finish, and then we'll deal and with I this. I believe those same tenets may be applied here. Now, they're performing genetic research, as you say? Yes, um... Biomutations on the plant matter testing different configurations. As far as I understand, it's, it's a little too complicated for me. Uh, not that I, am, not that I'm a fool, but I think some things. You, you, is it League folks have an expression? If it isn't broke, don't attempt to fix it. Something like that. Ah, but that's where the platitude fails us. You see, because it's not about fixing; it's about making things better. I am not convinced that you can't work with these individuals to find a way to leverage such mutations, as you call them, for the benefit 
of both of you. I've heard tale of flora proliferating at rapid rates due to mutagenic experimentation. What if you were to join them? She makes a sour face uh, at that sort of notion. Please tell me your pride is not going to get in the way of progress. It's got nothing to do with pride. They seek to distort and destroy the cycle of nature. With every waking breath of every one of them working in that guild. She reaches into a nearby bed where a bunch of uh, mushrooms have been planted and sort of pulls out a handful of soil and says, New life requires death to feed it. What Alwyn said is, is somewhat true. They are not interested in these natural methods. They take shortcuts. They create problems, and she looks back to the tangle. And that's not to say that their work isn't important. The discoveries that they make have improved the lives of people, but our agricultural work is important as well. Listen, this isn't the only place where I can do what I need to do. Oh, fuck, you beat me to it, damn it. <laughs> Neither is it the only place that Golival could do their work. Interesting. I'm keen to explore a phrase you used, and I respect it greatly. I may take it for myself, in fact. But new life requires death. Is that what you said? Indeed. So. And this is not the only place you can do your work. But it is a place you prefer, and I can respect that. I have a place of my own near the second, and I'd prefer to keep it intact as well, mostly. It, it would be somewhat of a logistical chore to move all of my crops. It certainly would. I understand that. It is not without my own pains to reallocate my possessions from time to time, from locale to locale. It is unfortunately a cost of doing business. And in your case, people shaking you about for your territory. I wonder if the best course of action is, let's call it a temporary rehabitating mm. of your flora. Allow me to elaborate if I may. We burn this place. We render it visibly, but not technically, useless. Golovar, none the wiser, will find this place in rubble and set their sights elsewhere. My, that is ambitious. I... I think that sort of tampering might open the door to a broader conflict that I would like to avoid. And that I believe Golovar would like to avoid as well. And that is why they have sent you here. However... If you were to assist me, you said you are here on Guild Pact business, right? That's right. You wouldn't happen to know about anyone stealing a sun disk out of the Pact office. No, that, that is news to me. Well, what about a Simic hybrid? Clark, you took the notes. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Where was that? Clark starts flipping through his notepad uh, until he comes across a page that just says, Frog Elf? With a question mark. That's what I fucking thought. Yeah, that, That's I what knew, I fucking I, thought. I knew it. I knew he yes. was queuing you. He was queuing you up for it. I love it. <laughs> I have not seen any frog elves. Golival is more of a lizard elf. Regardless, if you were to make usable another cavern that I might know of, and say to Golival that they may freely relocate there... You are agents of the Guild Pact. Would they not have to abide by your arbitration? You'd think so, right? While they were rather unwavering at our request before, I do believe that there is enough legality within what you say that we could affect change in such a way that benefits you, goal of all, and selfishly, dare I say, most importantly, us. I turn to Alwyn. What do you make of this? What's in the other cave? A problem that I am... Somewhat ill-disposed to deal with. You see, the mineral gaze of the Gorgon has little effect on creatures that are mostly comprised of minerals themselves. Mm. Rock monsters. Oh no, not quite. Skeletons. Oh, skeletons. Well, wonderful. And how far away is it? I can give you some direction, Alwyn. It shouldn't take someone with your expertise long to get there. Can't say I've been a great guide so far today, but 
I'll try my level best. Oh, when you discredit yourself, I think you've done a splendid job. What's a few slimes between friends, huh? <laughs> between friends. Feel free to recuperate and recover your stamina here for as long as you need. You're doing me a favor, after all. And if you'd like a special cup of tea, I might be able to help with that. Please define... Special how? You see, special tea has a different meaning in certain parts, and in particular, an establishment such as my own. Though you see why I would be hesitant to partake in any special tea. Illipel works in drug trafficking. Nothing wrong with mind-altering substances. She turns an eye to a particular mushroom patch. Mm -hmm. But that's not quite what I mean. She puts a hand on the mossy floor of this cavern. Listen. You can feel the thrum flowing through this place. This cavern is possessed of a tributary ley line, which is what brought both of us here. Things that grow here are strong. They are full of magical energies. And there is a nettle root that I could use that might restore to you some of your expended magical abilities. We'd appreciate it. That we would. I will. I shall partake. Uh, whispering, Elipel says, And perhaps later you can tell me a bit more about those. Pointing to the mind-altering flora. <laughs> we can hear you just fine, Elipel. You don't have to whisper. She does make you another cup of tea. If you'd like to, you can take a short rest here. Hell yeah. The effect of this, this tea will be, if you drink it, over the course of an hour um, while you rest, <laughs> you will recover three levels worth of expended spell slots. Dang. Hey. Cool. Uh, That's great. Yeah, and I will use Song of Rest real quick. And everyone gets four HP from that. Shit, I'm back to full. Between that and the hit dice. And I will say... And what does Zillapel's song sound like? It actually isn't a song. <laughs> it's just small speech. Um, <laughs> oh my god, a fucking chorus. <laughs> my talking. <laughs> Might I be the first to say over this splendid drink that I find it most fortuitous that we have all stumbled into each other's paths. Oh, man. Though somewhat guided, still feels rather serendipitous, and I think there's a cause for celebration. And while we may have stumbled here and there and found ourselves blundering about missing our opponents, I do believe this is the beginnings of something quite magical. All right, all right. I can feel myself taking psychic damage. Take your 4 HP and stop being miserable. <laughs> <laughs> you find these dull words rather soothing to your mind. At some point during this rest, Alwyn, Lana will pull you aside and say, Your mother's worried about you. I take it that means you've been to Stonehaven. Not recently. I've been here with my plants, but we keep in touch. And she's concerned. She needn't be. She needs your help, Alwyn, to deal with your brother. He's not my brother, and that responsibility does not belong to me or her. He betrayed the guild. It's the guild's job now. So you're not part of the guild anymore? Oof. I kind of grimace, and Illipel takes particular note of this conversation. Okay. Doesn't say anything, but like is paying attention. Make a perception check to see how much you overhear. This would oh, okay. be an att attempt to be done in private. You said perception? Yep, and in fact, also roll for me stealth to see if you can listen in without being noticed. Okay. Perception is a 16, stealth is an 11. Okay. You hear a little bit of this, and after a minute, Lana turns to you, Illipel, and says... Curiosity is sometimes a noble trait, but in this case, the tendrils of her hair sort of stiffen a little. Please, allow some old friend's privacy. It's all right, Lana. I kind of put my hand on her shoulder and say, Illipel is a trusted ally, and if we're going to trust each other, then we shouldn't keep any secrets. As I kind of look 
very earnestly at Elabel. I haven't abandoned the swarm, and it wasn't my intention to abandon my mother either, or my home. But what Edric did is unforgivable. I can't yet bring myself to do what needs to be done. She adjusts her glasses and looks at you somewhat sternly. If you can't do it for your own sake, do it for Renna's. Damn. A life worth living for, then, eh? The only way to earn a death worth dying. I kind of put my fist to my chest in a sort of salute. Thank you, Lana. Of course. You're like family to me. And are any of you still injured after this short rest? I'm nope. I'm missing two HP. Okay, why not? She's got plenty of first level spell slots. She'll notice you still have like a bruise on your face. Run a, a clawed finger over it, and you regain five HP. Okay, I'll take I'll take two of them. Should she also roll fucking like charisma? That little fucking move. Charisma. Never mind. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, it's... It, she's not doing it that way. I don't know. All that official Golgari art is uh, fine. Um, okay, after this, I kind of turn back to the party and say, All right, we best be off. She will give you directions that you would be able to interpret to find this other cavern. Awesome. All right, team. Let's go. It is going to be somewhat dark as you head into these tunnels. Great. I do have a keen sense of direction in the darkness. I am happy to lead if there are no other volunteers. Please, allow me. I should have started our trek out this way. I cast Dancing Lights uh, mm -hmm. around the three of us. Sort of small green orbs of light. And then after that, I will Wild Shape. Cool. You see my form quickly mutate into that of a... Very pale gray wolf with streaks of green and black in the fur in sort of similar placements to many of the runes that were on my leathers. All right. Clark looks visibly uncomfortable with the appearance of this wolf that's probably bigger than him. Uh, I nuzzle up on Clark's form, who is probably about the same height as my shoulders right now. Right. Yeah. Clark, my good sir. There is no need to scurry about over this. This is still our trusted friend, Alvin. He's taken on new shape. It is an adaptable, lovely trait of the druid. Yeah. One that I believe will come in handy. In fact, coming in handy right now. Excellent work. I had no idea you had such a proclivity for the lupine. I kind of snap it at... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> at... Uh, 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 the name is Illipel. <laughs> shut up. And, uh, I kind of snap it at Illipel's trolling on a little bit, and with my keen hearing and smell, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. You have directions. You are already pretty adept at navigating these passages. I'm not even going to make you roll the check. It would be pretty hard for you to but fail. But I want to roll with advantage, and I don't want to be surprised by fucking oozes. Okay, <laughs> roll me a survival check with advantage. <laughs> He's going to roll two ones. <laughs> one of them was a three, but the other one was an 18. So a total of... <laughs> wow. Cool. You beat the DC five. You find Fuck your <laughs> Fuck right the hell off. With Wolf Alwyn's adept guidance, you make your way through the murky passages of the Undercity, at last sort of arriving at these large, empty cavern that Lana described... You can hear the splash of thick droplets of water falling from stalactites above. And the only other sound echoing in this chamber is the shuffling clack of bones. How would you like to proceed? Kind of point my nose, my snout towards the sound. How far out do your dancing lights go? I... I probably keep them pretty close. Dim light, 10 feet. 10 feet. And I can move it up to 60 feet in any direction. So you can't see with that light any skeletons, but Illipel, you have dark vision, correct? Mm-hmm. 
you would see at the edge of your vision a pair of skeletons. Are you guys trying to approach surreptitiously, or are you just heading right in? I'll say, we were told to do some cleanup here, and I think we're all well aware of the fact that that will involve some combat, and my silver tongue is only so good. I do not believe I'll have the propensity nor the vocabulary to properly reason with these creatures. Best we just chip away at them. I come out of wolf form, seeing that it's probably best to just gear up and get ready. It's been a while since I walked on four feet like that. Illipel, I think you're right. Though, perhaps we should stealth as close as we can get to get a proper ambush. Clark is going to use mage armor. Alright, cool. Illipel will say, on your lead. I will use my second wild shape to use my symbiotic entity, and I will try and stealth ahead and maybe give like 10 or 15 feet before Illipel or Clork follow behind um, as I try and get as close as I can and, and see if I can see any others in this area I'll keep the dancing lights behind me okay? because I don't need to hold concentration or anything so I'll just keep them back a ways so I kind of go into the darkness and uh, stealth can Alwyn see in the dark? Hmm. Ah, you know what? I can't. So I'll actually keep one moat okay. near me, but very close. Almost like I'm holding a little lantern light in my hand. Because you have this mm. light with you, I am going to have you roll stealth with disadvantage. Okay. All right, well, real quick, uh, Elipel will say something. Elwyn, I think it might be wise to take those lights and put them in front of the enemy. That way you can both see them and distract them at the same time. Elipel, you're turning out to be quite the strategist. That's a great idea. And I will send some of my lights sort of off to one side okay. and see if that attracts them. 60 feet, you said? Yes. Let me specify if I can. It's range 120, and a 60 each bonus action is how far I can move it at, okay. at a time. Okay. Yeah. So moving it out the full 120? Yeah, like as far as I can go. Okay. Um, you see these lights sort of fly past the two skeletons that Illipel saw. Okay. And then as they fly further into the cavern, you see another pair of them shuffling around. Shambling? Shuffling, shambling around. Yeah. <laughs> further in. They don't seem to be, like, actively attacking the lights or anything, but some of them will, like, look at it. And... Okay. I look back to Illipel. Well done. And I'll try and sneak up. Uh, all right. So... Roll me stealth. Uh, it's not spectacular. Uh, that's a 14. Okay. The living dead are not particularly known for their wisdom. But that's one. Doesn't see you. Two don't see you. Three don't see you. What fucking skeletons are there? The, the four that you are aware of do not appear to be... Okay, so more than four. Got it. Heard. ...appear to be reacting to your presence... These better be easy fucking skeletons. Illipel Clark, how are you proceeding into this room? Are you following behind Alwyn? Are you taking your own path? There are three little motes of light on the outskirts of this cavern, sort of illuminating a few skeletons. I'd like to stealth in the dark towards one of the skeletons that is not being stalked by Alwyn. Okay. Uh, I want to get within witch bolt range. Okay. I am going to trail behind Alwyn at about 15 feet. Okay. As I see us moving in. Can I also say that I shillelagh as many weapons as I can get in before we get close enough? I'm gonna say... Here's the question. Does shillelagh have a verbal component? Mm, I don't think so, but let me double check. It does. It's a full VSM. Mm, okay. I would say you can probably shillelagh one, but the... That's fine. The, the doing of that will probably draw some attention. Okay, cool. So, you guys are gonna get a surprise round in. Hell yeah. But let's all go ahead and roll initiative. Uh, I've got a 15. 10. 17. Okay, so first up, uh, Illipel and Alwyn sort of approaching along, I'm going to say, the right side of this cavern. You come upon a skeleton. It's unaware of your presence. Illipel, you're up first. I believe you should make the opening attack. You are a bit more fearless than I am. Swing more true when I believe in you. Utterly and purely. And I will put Bardic Inspiration 
on Ooh, hell yeah. Elwin. I have a fucking sticky note for this now. <laughs> Last game, I absolutely forgot. And then I will... Yeah, I'm going to cast Heroism. What does it What does it look like when Elipel casts Heroism? I mean, it, it, it looks like him talking. What a surprise. Um, <laughs> what does he say? <laughs> for you bear the mark of a true hero. And with that, kind of a translucent, you know, almost wind just guides its way to Alwyn and kind of wraps around him and Alwyn you oh, gain man, five that's... temporary HP and you are immune to fear. Dang! Hell yeah. Alright. Cool. That was Illipel Alwyn. I'm gonna hit him. Okay. Yeah, so I've got my mallet shillelied. I draw my mallet and my quarterstaff from beneath my cloak as spores begin erupting around both of them and I attack. Very good. That's a 19 plus mod on the first. Okay, that definitely hits. <laughs> For a 25. And a... Seven plus six. Thirteen on the second hit. That hits exactly. Awesome. Sweet. Good to know. Okay, here I go. Oh, God, are you kidding me? Well, this is wholly unimpressive for having some extra damage on top of this. On the first hit, that is nine damage, and two of that is necrotic. It is not reduced. Okay, good to know. And the second hit is six bludgeoning and four necrotic. Very good. Yeah, you you lay into this skeleton, and it seems particularly strongly affected by the bludgeoning weapons that you've got. Hell yeah. You crack it once in the skull and again in the ribs, and it crumbles into an inert pile of bones before you. Oh, shit. Awesome. One of these skeletons now taken out. We go to Clork. You're sort of approaching from the other side of the cavern. You see one of these skeletons in the dim light of Alan's green moat. All right. I got to blast him with a glitch bolt. All right. Go ahead. It's a 16 to hit. 16 very much hits. Okay. So Clark points his wrench at this skeleton and a blue arc of lightning erupts from the end of the wrench. And it sort of uh, courses through the air with, like, square edges and, like, a wave pattern. Nice. And that's going to be eight lightning damage. Very good. This skeleton seems quite injured by that. And now we're going to go into regular rounds. Illipel, you see one of the skeletons towards the middle of the room. You would see it come closer. It stops about 30 feet out from where you are and... And it's going to, with its rotting wooden bow, take a shot at Illipel. Uh, does a 10 hit? It does not. I did not think so. The arrow lands in the dirt beside you, and now it is your turn. Let's not get too cocky, but I do believe this will be some short-lived rabble for us to deal with. It could be more, but so far, so good. Illipel is going to go up to the one that just attacked them and do some stabbies. Very good. Yeah, does a 12 hit? I'm afraid not. You thrust at it, but it goes directly between the ribs. Classic. Ah. Having no effect. Afraid I spoke too soon. Alwyn, you're up next. You kind of aren't sure where this is happening. You heard Illipel run ahead of you. So there, there aren't any immediately around me anymore? No. There was just the one? Okay. There was just the one, and there's sort of one on the other side. I can see where where the one near the lights where Clork attacked is. Yeah, you can see the sort of arc of lightning between Clork and that one. Is there only one there, or you said there were kind of in pairs? Is there still a second one near that in that light, or not? No. Okay. You dispatched that one. Cool. Good to know. Before I take my action, can I make some sort of check to see if I would know, having spent a lot of time down here, if skeletons would be particularly resistant to poison damage. I think nature would make sense for that. Okay. Yeah, I was just seeing if I could know that. Cool, that's a dirty 20. Skeletons have no blood and are hard to poison. I thought so. So I'm not going to use Ray of Sickness. 
Before I move the light from where that skeleton is near, I'm going to cast Ice Knife at it. All right. And I believe I hit with a, another dirty 20. And now that skeleton and any others immediately around it have to make a dexterity saving throw. There are none immediately around it, but it will attempt a dex save. It got a 17 on its dex save. Yikes, that does pass, but... I believe the primary target still takes some damage, yes? Yeah, they do. Yep. That's a pass, but that skeleton still takes 10 piercing damage. Okay. This is magical, right? So... Yes. Clork, Alwyn, you sort of both see with the combined fury of the elements you're unleashing on this skeleton... It crackles with lightning and then is stabbed with ice and it crumbles into nothing more than moldering bones. Hell yeah. Damn. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to move the light kind of in a straight line from where it is towards me and stop if I happen to catch another skeleton or Illipel in that light. You see the pair that was distant sort of becomes invisible to you, but as you pull the lights backward, you can see the sort of place where Illipel and the third skeleton are fighting. Perfect. As I'm waving my hands, guiding this light back towards me and Illipel, having seen them in combat, I stop it there, and then I use my movement to engage. Okay, cool. That's my turn. Okay. Clork, out of the darkness, an arrow flies towards you. Uh Uh-oh. Does a 12 hit you while mage armored? No. Hell yeah. Nice. The ancient arrow dinks harmlessly off your force-projected armor, and now it is your turn. All right. All right, so Alwyn dropped that one that had the uh, witch bolt attached to it, right? Correct. Uh, Are there any other skeletons anywhere near me with my dark vision? Goblin. Goblin. You see a skeleton that just shot at you. All right. It's about 50 feet out from where you are. You want some of this? I'm going to shoot a... (laughs) (laughs) So I can hit it from where I'm standing. I'm going to shoot a chaos bolt at it. Lovely. That's going to miss, though, with a nine. Oh, my God. These chaos bolts. Chaos bolt is going to do what chaos bolt is going to do. They can fuck right off, though. Damn it. And spiral off harmlessly into the darkness. Here, let me see what what it would have been. Oh, it was a double seven. Oh, oh. oh. Psychic damage. You hate to see that. Yeah, I know. You would have obliterated the proto-psyche of that skeleton. <laughs> In another world, you did. I look to Illipel as I, as I see it one of these fucking bolts of magic streak off in the darkness, I just kind of go. We really have to get him some sort of ring of accuracy or something. (laughs) Or maybe a bit of inspiration next time. I just need to stop rolling below seven. Yeah. Something happens. Illipel, the skeleton engaged with you is going to take a swing with its- Hold on a sec. Something happens. Yeah, something happens. Okay. Something happens off screen. It's one of the other skeletons. It's going to be like a fucking bigger skeleton. Oh, God. With its rusted blade, it hopefully doesn't hit you with a 13? Does not. Okay, it rattles its rusty saber at you, but does no real damage. Uh, And now it's your turn. I'm just going back after it. See if we do better this time. Yeah, okay. That should do it. A 22 order. If you beat its AC by more than five, you don't hit. Okay. Cool, I'll tell you what the damage is, because I'm hitting. (laughs) Alright, it is nine piercing damage. You stab at this moss-covered skeleton, and while your blade sort of squelches well through the moss, it's not really the weapon designed to break bones. This skeleton does take slightly less damage from that attack. Beat him with the hilt. She kept kidding. I'm kidding, I said piercing. I have to commit to it. But next time, I'm doing a jaw smash with that hill. Illipel, uh, sort of at the edge of your field of vision, you see another skeleton advancing towards your party. Is that the something else happens, or is that the... Is this the fourth one, or is this a fifth one? This is a fifth one. Okay, I fucking thought so. And we know there's a sixth one, because something (laughs) happened. It looses an arrow. Double check, because this might be a disadvantage with the range. If it's a long bow, it's pretty far. No, it's a short bow. That's why I'm double checking. That's a good reason to name them that. 
Yeah, I think so. So it's great about D&D. It just makes sense. And with dndbeyond.com... <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> oh, no. The short range of that is still 80 feet. So does a 15 oh, yeah. hit you, Illipel? Yeesh, it does. All right. Uh, one of these arrows finally finding its mark. Uh, you take a maximum of eight piercing damage. Okay. Illipel gives a visible wince at that level of pain and does their best to carry on. All right, Elwyn, you're up. Okay, I see Elipel take this wound. I prepare to swing into the skeleton. I stay my mallet. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Illipel for seven. Thank you, good sir. With a deferential nod, I cock my quarterstaff and take my bonus action to Shillelagh, my second weapon. All right, Shillelagh's going full steam. Skeleton number two. It's going to take another uh, attack with its bow. But a 12 does not hit. Against me? Against Quark. 12 does not hit. Your mage armor once again <laughs> deflecting this arrow, and now it is your turn. All right. Let's try this again. I'm going to shoot a chaos bolt at it. I point my wrench, and nothing happens, and then I pull some batteries out of my back pocket and put them <laughs> in the wrench. I'm going to use my bonus action to convert some sorcery points into a spell slot. Hell yeah. And now I'm going to shoot that Chaos Bolt. Very good. That's a 14 to hit. Absolutely hits. Yes. Here we go. Let's see what happens here. Chaos! Double lightning. It's double thunder. Fuck yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. You can redirect it to the one that Illipel and Alwyn are fighting, I believe. Okay. So here, let's process through this. Dang, it actually so happened. The, yeah. It did actually. Ha- it happened two rolls in a row. It just. It's not highly unlikely. I guess... No, that's true. It's one in 64. Right? There it is. <laughs> Jimmy immediately had to calculate. And that's, why we keep, and that's why we keep Jimmy around. He had to immediately calculate the odds. Oh, I thought it was because he does all of our editing. <laughs> 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 and hates um. himself. <laughs> oh. Actually, Clork, you know, Clork, has all these tables prepared with the probability of hitting of each, you know, success of oh whatever God, he might be trying. Awesome. It's anyway, in the back of his, it's in the back of his spiral notebook. He's got little spreadsheets. Anyway, that's going to be 21 thunder damage. Holy shit! <laughs> With a deafening clap of thunder, oh, no. this skeleton is reduced to bone dust. You can make a new attack roll against the skeleton that is being fought by Illipel and Alwyn. Got it. All right, let's see what happens here. <laughs> that's a 24 to hit. Again, if you beat their AC by more than 10, the attack misses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the batteries. It works. Yeah. Fixed it. Forgot to, forgot to put batteries in it. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Okay. So that is... I have a choice of acid or cold here. I think cold's probably a safer bet. That's seven cold damage against this next one. Seven cold damage. The thunderclap sort of high pressure drives out all the heat from the area and a sort of moat of ice forms, flies, strikes this other skeleton, and it appears to be gravely injured. Fucking science. That's what's supposed to happen. Illipel, at the edge of your vision, you can see another skeleton. Is this number five or number six? This is number six now. Fuck. Clark, you see this one as well. Approaching y'all, short bow in hand, it's gonna take a shot at Alwyn. Cool. Uh, and with a seven, uh, the arrow falls well nah. short of its mark. I, like, look around like I heard it, and it's just gone. Right. Uh, we're at skeleton number one. Is that, that the is one the right one... next to us? Yes, indeed, cool. if you'd like to use your reaction. I would like to use my reaction to cast Hail of Spores. Make a constitution save, please. It will make a con save. This is six, and adding two, I'm guessing an eight does not do. Nope. That's going to fail... It's going to take seven necrotic damage. All right. As you surround it with these choking spores, they sort of get into the gaps of the bones and dismember whatever sort of necrotic force was animating it. It crumples to the ground. Hell yeah. And now it doesn't take its turn. So Illipel, there's Fuck still yeah. two skeletons out in the distance. How far are they? I can I can see them. So they're less than 60. Yeah, about 50, 60 feet out. All right. All right, I'm going to um, just target, I don't know, there's a left one and a right one, uh, the left one. Okay. Look at you. 
All your friends are dead and you're nothing but a sack of bones. And cast Vicious Mockery. Hell yeah. That's right. Make it feel like nothing. Has to make a wisdom saving throw. Ah, uh, yes. I'm guessing a 12 doesn't beat your DC. Does not do it. That little dude's going to take three damage, and it's got disadvantage on the next attack roll. Okay, it's going to take that next attack roll at you right now with disadvantage. Ooh, uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, It rolled an 11 and a 14. It adds four to those rolls, so I believe a 15 hits you. Yep. Not keen on being mocked. Maybe once a proud warrior, the skeleton fires at you, dealing four points of piercing damage. So teach me to mock the dead. Alwyn, you're up. I want to start with my bonus action. Can I get my lights to follow in the direction that I saw Illipel go off? Yes, absolutely. And you would have enough range to get them out to where these skeletons are. I'm going to go ahead and embrace some more of these these spells. It's amazing. Um, I'm going to move as far as I can with my regular movement. I think that'll get me next to Illipel. Yeah. So this thing is still a little ways away from us. I'm going to go ahead and cast Chill Touch. Chill Touch. Very good. And I don't think I've cast this even once yet. So you see I sort of point the hammer end of my mallet towards this skeleton. And you see a sort of spectral version of the mallet strike out towards it. As I roll, crit fail. Your spectral mallet flies into the darkness, ineffective. (sighs) That's my turn. (laughs) Clark, we're over to you. All right. So the closest targets are 60 feet? Yes. Okay. I'm going to use my 30 feet of movement to close that a little bit, and I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to stow my wrench, pull out my light crossbow, and... Loose the crossbow bolt. Excellent. 22 to hit. Absolutely. Seven points of piercing damage. Great. You fire. Your bolt embeds itself somewhat loosely in the bone, perhaps not as deep as it would in flesh, but still taking some damage. That skeleton will... Are there any stalagmites near me that I can hide behind? (laughs) Uh, yeah, sure. You could take a bonus action to hide. (laughs) All right. It's only a four. Uh oh. I hear somewhere in the distance, Clork tripping on rocks. The skeleton will attempt a perception check. Well, that's interesting. The skeleton rolled a one. It subtracts one from this roll. Oh my wow. god, a zero. It is clueless as to where Clark has gone. Clark is standing behind a rock that's like maybe waist high on him. <laughs> nice. Try not to move. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to run up towards Alwyn and Illipel. Let's... Uh, On the start of its turn, please make me a constitution saving throw. Yeah, sure. As it enters your area, it rolled a 19. Okay. Fine. Uh, Randomly determined target. One, two, three, four. One, two. Alwyn, it's coming at you. Uh, A 20, I presume, hits. 20 hits. Its rusty sword digs into you, dealing four points of slashing damage. Not even all of my heroic temporary HP. You love that. Mm, indeed, and you'll gain another five at the uh, beginning of your turn. Amazing. What a good spell. Which is not now, because it's Illipel's turn. I'm gonna do a stabby. Alright. Is this with advantage now? You could probably move into a flank with this one that's up in your face. Let's go ahead and do that. My second roll was a nat 20. Hell yeah. Well, hot diggity damn. Go ahead and roll your crit damage. That'll be 17 piercing damage. 17. You thrust your rapier. You knock out a few vertebrae from the back of this thing. It appears to be barely standing. Now the one that is at range that you viciously mocked is going to run up to you and swing with its sword these creatures hold grudges. <laughs> That's a 20 to hit. Yeah. Uh, dealing another eight points of slashing damage. They did tend to forget less than the living. Okay. Illipel is hurt. Uh, Alwyn, it's your turn. Focus on ending them, 
around you. All right. I'm going to swing. Please do. At whichever looks more hurt. That would be the one that uh, Illipel just attacked. But this is with advantage, because we're opposite each other? That is literally a 1 and a nat 20. Sick. Go ahead and roll your crit damage. That's going to be 17 damage total, 5 of that necrotic. You obliterate this thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just drive my mallet straight through its head. Then I'm going to turn around and swing on the other one with my quarter staff. Okay. Did you get another single nat 20? Ro- single roll, second nat 20. All right, go ahead and roll your damage. <laughs> this, this fucking blue dice is rolling so well. It's doing a great job. Jesus Christ. Okay, with the quarter staff. So no mod on the offhand attack, but that's still going to be six bludgeoning and six necrotic. Total of 12. Yeah, these things have 13 hit points, and it already took a little bit of damage from Illipel's mockery. You smash it into the ground. It is no more. I'll let you know there's no more skeletons in your immediate future. We're going to exit initiative. You know, I was going to crit, too. <laughs> I'm sure your batteries were just warming up. Your attacks were impressive, Cloak. Oh, thanks. You're not too bad yourself. Alan's... Alan's so serious. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> I love it. It's great. <laughs> All right. Everyone good? Anyone hurt? Seeing that Illipel is pretty hurt, I'll go ahead. Uh, I only have one spell slot left. Illipel, you're injured. Should we rest before we continue? While a nice rest would be certainly helpful, I do think expediency is key here, and it's no matter. I know that I will have the strength and perseverance to carry on with enough healing and guidance to aid me. And I will cast Healing Word on myself, because I have two... I didn't want to say say that, so I tried to... I got the max roll, so that's nine. All right. Very good. Dang. The skirmish has taken you sort of to the halfway mark of this cavern. You would assume you can't really see all the way to the end. It feels like the halfway mark. But you're about 30, 40 yards in, and there's probably a similar distance to go. Sorry, can I make like an investigation check or something on these skeletons before we move on? Absolutely, please. Dope. I still have the lights up, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yeah, you wouldn't want to miss out on some platinum coins. Hey, man, you know, I... <laughs> you know, I, I gave him away last time, so... <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. I'm pretty good at investigation. I'm gonna roll two. It's only a ten for me. You got a nineteen. Investigation. Okay. I got a flat eighteen. Okay, yeah. So, again, these skeletons don't seem very well equipped. Their bodies are old, covered with sort of rotting leathers that are being eaten by this creeping, moldering moss. And similarly, their bows and short blades have sort of been eaten away at by time. There's nothing really valuable on their corpses. Not even the moss is good. It's no matter. We've accomplished what we've set out to do. There could be more. We should be careful. Let's charge forward and make sure. As you proceed forward, could you all roll me a perception check? There it is. That's the one. 16. Nat 1, but for what it's worth, a 7. Nat 20, plus 0. Woo! Okay. What does Clark perceive? Ooh, boy. Clark. Mm. Okay. Also, I don't know if it's... Sorry, I don't know if it's been 10 minutes until Clark perceives this or not. No, it wouldn't take you 10 minutes to walk 40 yards. Awesome. Perfect. As you get to sort of the opposite end of the cavern, Clark milling around the exit, you see a glint of deep blue. Oh, I think I know what this is. That's weird. Do you see that? Where? Up ahead. Straight ahead. Over by the exit over there. Can I steer my lights towards it? You can. Is it one of these fucking things that we fought before? You see shuffling in the far oh, end of the cavern. Of Session zero, coming back to haunt us. A different sort of skeleton coated in this dark blue mineral that Alwyn, you immediately recognize this dread horde warrior. It, having retained more of its intelligence and fighting ability from life, sees as you direct your lights towards it 
and it draws out its kopesh, and everyone, let's roll initiative once more. 19. I've got another 15. 13. The same initiative order, basically. Yeah, weird. Do you see it now? I forgot humans can't see ultraviolet. A familiar sight, I'm afraid. Looking to Illipel. Vaguely familiar to me as well. Let's do our absolute best. Hey, friends. Illipel, you're up first in this combat. You see this very familiar sight. I remember such a creature from the night of the invasion. Peculiar we'd find it here. It's no matter. We certainly can't afford to miss it. I will cast Fairy Fire on it. Makes a deck save, please. Deck save. Uh, I'm assuming that a 12 does not pass. It ain't gonna do it. All right, it is illumined by your Fairy Fire. Alwyn, you're up. I am going to approach, and as I do, I would like to use my action to cast Chill Touch. Roll your attack with advantage. That's gonna be a 15 plus 6. That will very much hit. So it's going to take five necrotic damage. It can't regain any health if it has the ability to do so until my next turn. But more importantly, because I know it's undead, it has disadvantage on attack rolls against me until my next turn as well. Okay, very good. You see me extend this spectral mallet again, but successfully hitting this time, it sort of quickly morphs into a chilled spectral hand and sort of clings to the body and i want to get right into melee with this creature very cool this rhyme weighing down this creature clark please what do i know about this blue shit (laughs) roll engineering or arcana eight unfortunately clark has kind of been kept out of the loop on the projects experimenting with this new mineral something that he is rather peeved about Nobody tells me nothing anymore. How far away is it from me? 50 or 60 feet out. Okay. When your group would have noticed it. Okay. I'm going to close a little bit of distance there and I'm going to use my crossbow. That's a 23 to hit. It's very much. Still roll with advantage. Maybe you'll crit. Oh, yeah. Cool. It is illumined by fairy fire. It is illumined. No, that's an 18 rolled an 18 and a 19 so close so close uh you do hit though six points of piercing damage similar to the other skeletons you've faced before this creature does seem somewhat less affected by piercing damage but it is effective okay and i'm going to try to hide as a bonus action very good it's a crit fail no okay it is not fooled by your attempts to hide. Over here, look at me. <laughs> Ignore the goblin. You've dealt the most damage to it, so it will perceive you as the greatest threat. Cool, go ahead and make me a con save. Okay. 19. Yeah, it passes, fine. Okay, as it runs up on you, it's con save pass. It's going to roll these attacks with disadvantage. Uh, does a 15 hit? Uh, 15 will still hit. Okay, the first strike of the Kopesh digs into you. Oh, I... Fuck. This fucking weapon. It deals eight slashing damage, and it's going to use its bonus action to attempt to trip you, make me a strength save. Okay. Strength save. That's a 16. Okay. You managed to keep your footing, so it will continue to roll attacks against you at disadvantage. A nat one will not hit. Fuck yeah. And then its third attack. Jesus. Three multi-attack. That's spicy. It is a it is a very adept warrior. These sure. were the these were the greatest fighters of Amonkhet, uh, but still uh, weighed down by your rhyme. And eight will not connect. Fuck yeah, that was my plan. Illipel, it is now back to you. All right, I will use my movement to get into a flanking position, and then flanking will not give you super advantage. No, I, I'm so aware. You know. I'm aware. I just want to be in flanking position. Yeah, I will get into flanking position and say you're surrounded at every corner. You can understand what that is. You have no understanding. You have no meaning. Uh, and use Vicious Mockery to do a little bit of damage, and more importantly, keep it at disadvantage. Okay. Fuck yeah. Rolled an 11 on its wisdom save, which does not succeed. Two damage. Two damage? Play of the game. <laughs> that was Illipel, unless you have any other actions. Mm. I'm still inspired. I'm fine. While I do believe your batteries have certainly turn the tide in your favor. I think 
you can do even better. And I will use one bardic inspiration charge on Clork. Elwin, we're over to you. Okay, I'm going to swing. A couple of big swings here with advantage. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's going to be a 15 plus 6 on the first. Well, that will hit. And a 17 plus 6 on the second. See, this time you rolled higher, so that will miss. Yeah, of course. First swing. Ooh. Ooh, you love to see those eights on D8s. Mm. That is the better number in most cases. In most cases. That's going to be 14 on the first swing. Two of that is necrotic. Okay. And 12 on the second swing. Six of that is necrotic. Okay. You strike into this thing. These these bludgeons, not reduced due to their magical nature, as they strike this eternalized warrior, it appears quite injured by this assault. Your kind have no place here. I swing into them. Clark, we're over to you. All right. I'm going to finish closing the distance. I'm going to run right up to it. And I'm going to grab it with a shocking grasp. All right. Trying to figure out how I want to flavor that. I think it's just a melee attack with the wrench. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Okay, here we go. Gonna add the bardic. Well, did you did you roll with advantage? No, I didn't. Okay. Gonna add the bardic. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, so that is gonna be... It's a 17 to hit. You reach out with your wrench... You think you're going to fall short. You reach for whatever words of encouragement that Illipel gave you to try and push you that extra mile. And you go, and you think you're going to hit. And deftly, this warrior is able to sidestep your attack. And you do just barely miss. Damn. Okay, so AC of 18, taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> Any other actions, Clark? I'm, I'm going to disengage as a bonus action. And uh, nice. move whatever my movement is left away from this guy. Yeah, you get slightly out of its range. And now it's its turn. Please make me another con save. Okay. This time it only got a nine. Awesome. My halo of spores activates, shooting up from the ground around my feet. And towards it, it takes five necrotic damage. All right. These choking polyps seem to impact it and wither it away somewhat. It now barely clinging to an animate state. Illipel, it looks at you, and it's odd. Over here, look at me. Don't look at them. This husk recognizes me. Something perhaps to that effect, as it looks directly in your eyes and begins to flail at you this first attack at disadvantage. So a nine not hitting, but it takes another attack against you. And 11 not hitting. <laughs> you love to see that. You love to see it. It takes its final attack against you. A 24, I hope, hitting. Uh, Whoa. let me check. Let me check. Actually, it hits. I know, sometimes if you beat the AC by 10, it, it'll miss, but... Yeah, I checked. I looked at... The, I did some rules adjudication. <laughs> Turns out it hits. Kind of shitty. It slices you for five points of slashing damage and make me a strength save, please. As it uses its bonus action to try to take your legs out with this co-passion. Love the strength save that I'm not very good at. This is cool. Okay, dicey dice. 16? Yeah. Okay. This this thing hacks at your legs, but you managed to keep your footing, and now you're... All right, I uh, will do an attack. Okay. 19 ought to do it. Yes, indeed, it does. You're okay. You're laughing. I'm like, it ought to do it, right? Yeah, no, it does. And you love to see this part. This part's great. The eight on the dice. Oh, you love to see those eights. Uh, for a total of, yeah, you love to see that uh, for a total of 11. Okay. It's really hurting. Uh, let me, I, yeah, I don't have anything else in my kit I can do damage with, so I'll give a courteous bow to this foul. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do anything. My turn's over. <laughs> uh, yeah, but as you stab it, its empty eyes look back at you with what can only be construed as rage. Ah, come at me, you meaningless husk. Alwyn, you're up. I'm going to keep swinging. Okay. 
The red dice now with the nat 20. You, you look, the second he's got that shit-eating grin, I already know. <laughs> <laughs> I love the shit-eating but like, grins. But as a DM, he's not as happy because he feels a little bad. A little, a, a little bad as a sometimes. Player, as a player, utterly elated. <laughs> No, nah, it's great. Um, player me loves I'm, to see it. I'm utterly elated because this crit couldn't come at a better time. It had two hit points left. Oh my Go god, ahead. I'm gonna destroy it. And please add some flourish to this final blow of the combat. Damage-wise, we're looking at a big 20 from my mallet. When you 10x the damage, it negates the damage. Yeah, of course. That's the rules. I don't make the rules. It's a 4 e rule, though. <laughs> No, that's that's from AD&D. We don't we don't really use that. Oh, okay. Anymore. I just take my mallet and you see all of this dark energy coalesce as my spores sort of all at once cling fast and form these spikes and I drive it through its head and the spikes exploding in necrotic energy as it falls to the ground. This thing's head explodes the echoing clang of your blow sounding throughout this empty cavern and we're going to go ahead and exit initiative as you believe you've cleared this place out there's nothing quite like the thrill of battle when met with the tidy cleaning up of loose ends well done friends well done indeed nice job Alwyn I want to loot the body okay roll me an investigation check maybe Cloak can Find some bardic bad. inspiration. <laughs> oh shit! No, I'm gonna use it. You're fucking right. Uh, I'm gonna use this bardic. Because <laughs> I'm rolling an eleven. Six on the bardic dice. There we go. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. You see, it's Kopesh, this strange weapon from another world. You think it might be valuable to a collector, perhaps, or you know, if you invested some time in it, it's not dissimilar to a sickle used by druids that you would know. You might be able to sort of learn this fighting style that aims to knock people's legs out from under them. Yeah, I'm going to take that. Anyone else looking for anything? Not looking for anything in particular. I rolled a 12. All right, let's see what we can do. I was not going to, but you know, we're here. You just might as well. I can tell there's a higher roll needed to make use of this blue armor. I can just see it on their face. 16. Okay, yeah. Beyond the weapon, you don't see anything of interest. And, uh, yeah. You can go where you like from here. Let's continue on. Let's make our way back to Golovong. All right. Alwyn, go ahead and make a survival check with advantage. Yeah. Yeah, I assume right around the time that my entity would drop here. Go ahead and make this roll. Not amazing. Not amazing. That's only a 11. Yeah, you... Wander through the tunnels and sluiceways of the Undercity, but you, at some point, lose your bearings. Oh no, this doesn't seem right. And here I thought it was just leading us back the way we came. Damn. Though, you run into a couple of Devkar and elves down here. And they take note of you. Hello there. General Kenobi! <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do that. Do they look Golgari? Yes. Okay. I approach Hood down, and I say in Elvish. <laughs> it kind of gets lost in translation, but I'll say something like, Hail Swarmsman, we're looking for the way back to Zonot 7. Oh, hello, fellow drone. To Zonot 7, hmm? Yeah, don't know what you'd want with those strange mutants. Mm. Tell me about it. Foul business, I'm afraid. We hope to be done with it as soon as we can. Roll, uh, roll persuasion with advantage because they're guild mates. Sure. <laughs> awesome. Persuasion, that's a flat 18. Ah, uh, yes. I can see where you went wrong. You zigged a tunnel back where you should have zagged. I can point you the way. We'd appreciate it. Afraid I used all my wild shapes getting us this far. And... Oh, shaman, huh? Huh? Something of the sort. Great honor learning the old ways. Mm, indeed. I kind of give the same chest bump with my fist. The DC will be lowered. Go ahead and roll me one more survival check with advantage. <laughs> it's the same goddamn roll. 
Another 5 plus 6, 11. That's okay. The DC has been lowered. You managed to find your way back to the path. After a little while, the trickle of the sewers is replaced by the rushing falls of Zonot 7 as you emerge near the Simic habitat and are able to make your way back to the Biogenic Archive. See, the trick when you run into other scavengers down there, you just don't ask what they're doing and you'll be fine. It's a good tip. I think you have a way with people. One of the many reasons I am glad to be in your company. You head to the Biogenic Archive, you pass through the gelatinous membrane into the office. The same bored-looking Vidalkin is sitting at the desk. I look to Illipel for this one. Ah, hello again. It's great to see you. We come bearing good tidings. Gullival, your accomplices are here. Gullival emerges from their office, beckons you to join them. We're your accomplices. We follow. Well, perhaps my assistant found the word assistant to be demeaning. Please, tell me, what has transpired? I'm happy to report that we come bearing good news. Hmm. We have resolved your situation quite hastily, and discreetly, I might add. I do believe that the course of action taken will be most well received, as it does net you exactly what you had looked for. You will now have exclusive rights to property in the network that you were looking. I must tell you, we did not evict the subject as requested. But you have secured... Before you say more, we've done something better. We have cleared out a separate space nearby, close enough where the soil is as favorable. But there is even more room, quicker access to the exit, and a more forgiving space. (laughs) That's not fucking true. (laughs) Go ahead and roll persuasion or deception on this one. We'll call it deception. We'll call it deception. Oh, yeah, probably going to do just fine at a 25. You can provide me with the coordinates to this new location? I would be happy to. I am not as familiar with your understanding of the space itself. I got it. Clark is going to hold up his hand and use prestidigitation to show, like, a map of the Undercity. Uh, cool. With the location highlighted of where we just were. Illusory image that you fit in your hand. What a good last clause of prestidigitation. Gullival will look approvingly and say, It will take some logistical effort to move all of our equipment to this new location. And it would quite possibly have the same magical properties that we're looking for. I will say this is not an ideal Resolution, but it is an acceptable one, and for my part, I shall fulfill my end of the bargain. Please. They sort of slap their hands on the desk, withdraw a notepad, and say, Describe in as much detail as you can the nature of the mutations of the individual you are looking for. Seeing that Clark Uh, is about to pull up the same fucking... (laughs) Page. <laughs> I look to Illipel and I say, Maybe you better give it a try. While I stand on the guidance of our great leader here and his exceptional, diligent note-taking, I will do my best. I believe it is a frog. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it, you guys. Come on. Oh, <laughs> um... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right. Let me get, get my composure. Fuck you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't roll your eyes, Jimmy. You made this monster. All right. Um, I will do my best with the details. We know very little, but its shape was decently understood by one of the victims. It is a webbed creature, resembling a frog or some other amphibian. Again, details scarce. Its size and overall silhouette signify something of an elvish frame. It did move silently, it moved quickly, and best we know may have left residue behind. Something sticky against the walls. I put the vial on the table. Ah, excellent. A sample will be very helpful in narrowing down the individuals. Any other capabilities it might have had? It expelled a foul-smelling gas. Ah, yes, that should have foul smelling. What were the gases effects? A poison, I presume? It knocked him right out, right? Or sleep-inducing. Best to investigate both possibilities. 
sleep-inducing, any other notable mutations? Well, it got in without a trace. Didn't activate any of the wards. Ah, yes. That should make it possible to narrow it down, perhaps, under ten potential subjects? I shall take this information, currently, to the cerebral jelly, and I shall come back with an answer. If you'd like to accompany me to the to the archive vaults, where I will commune with the cerebral jelly, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, that'd be great. Ah, yes, please. It might be nice to glean a little bit more from this process. The cerebral jelly is one of my proudest creations. I take, well, I wasn't the only person on the team developing it, but I do take I loudly some, roll my eyes from beneath my hood. I do take some pride in its genesis. I think that's more than natural. There's nothing quite like building something from the ground up amongst colleagues and friends. Am I correct? Absolutely. Please, please follow me. They lead you down a corridor past where the offices are. Can I kind of trail last and do some perception checks? Sure. That's a dirty 20 on the first one. Looks like a doctor's office so far. <laughs> if you say so. Dirty 20, that's DM speak for there's nothing here, stop rolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew that. I didn't write I just content make for him, this room. Just I just want to make him tell me. That's fine. You pass through another couple of these gelatinous oh, membranes. Disgusting. Down some flights of stairs and eventually into a massive cylindrical chamber. The walls filled with shelves upon shelves of different tubes and jars and other sort of sample containers and floating at the top of this cylinder down towards your group is this giant jellyfish its central mass veined in the sort of appearance of gray matter looking like a brain as it floats down towards you through the air you can see, as it gets closer, firing of neurons through its central body and down its transparent tentacles as it approaches, and Golival steps towards it, and it wraps a tentacle around them, picks them up, and sort of stuffs them into its center where they go into a bit of a trance. A fucking wretch from disgust. <laughs> Fascinating. I uh, I look at my party and say, Am I the only one at a distinct loss for words? I wouldn't quite put it that way, Illipel. After a moment, Golival is removed from this creature, covered in slime and deposited on the ground next to you. They use a prestidigitation spell to clean themselves off. And they say to you, Well... I think I have some leads for you to pursue. Three individuals have the specific array of mutations that you've identified. And they are... I look to Clark. Clark takes him, out... Yeah. Expecting no. him to take out his notebook. I just... I didn't say it. Yeah, sorry. Clark yeah. takes his notepad out of his back pocket. They are... A veterinarian, Vesic Vistan. A courier, Jarlota Novach. And a laboratory assistant, Kassiel Obstani. Such an interesting process that you've given us the pleasure of bearing witness to. But I don't want to wax on about that. I could wax on about it for quite some time. I'd love to hear about it. And I do. Uh... How does it work? Ah, oh, well. I visibly shudder at the thought of them describing it, and I sort of try and back out of the room. <laughs> Put it in sort of layperson's terms. No need for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This was many years of research and development. A good century of my life was dedicated to the genetic structuring process of this particular creature. So if I were to... And while I would love to hear about it, it seems to me that you hold this work dearly. And I being someone that can relate to the pleasure, seeing something worked so hard for and longed so long for, come to fruition. I would hate to rush you through this story, and through the detail and the arduous labor and work and love that went into it. Unfortunately, there is something very important missing that very important people want unearthed. And these clues you have given us will help us do just that, and we are most grateful for it. Sadly, Clark, I am afraid, 
We need to take our leave. Sorry, my companions aren't very curious. We'll get back in touch with you another time. I'm already out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there's a sad strain of incuriosity among some people. However, let me provide you a little more information. I can let you know where these people work and where their homes might be if you wanted to go speak with them. How invasive. Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> Clark has his pen ready. We do collect, you know, billing information from our patients. Tell us about Vesik Vistan. Vesik Vistan, as I said, a veterinarian. They live here in the Zonot, although at this time of day they're likely to be in the Beast Havens on their work. Those Beast Havens? Yes, the Beast Havens in the third precinct. Precinct. I did say precinct. No. Oh. Rodent district. <laughs> and that, that's, the, that's the vet? Yeah, that's the vet. Jarlota? Jarlota is a courier in Whitestone, and she has lodging there as well. And Cassiel? Information about them is somewhat restricted. I suspect even lab assistant is not entirely correct. Uh, I think they're one of Vanifar's. I couldn't find the lab that they work at, but... They do have an apartment in the residential area of the Zonot down below. All right. You've been very helpful. If there's uh, anything else you need, I'd love to learn some more from your cerebral jelly. Scala, what time of day is it? Uh, it's midday. You came here early in the morning, spent a few hours adventuring. Well, if you're ever interested in getting into biogenic research and perhaps leaving me more physical sciences behind. I wouldn't go that far. We're always looking for people who have initiative. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Now, if there's nothing else, I also have other projects to attend to, and I'm sure you will want to be following up on these leads. All right. Let's go. So we just, like, walk out and discuss? Yeah, we can walk out and discuss. That was amazing. So we have three leads, is that correct? A veterinarian, a courier, and a lab assistant. Although the lab assistant sounds dubious, for sure. That's the second time we've heard Vanifor's name mentioned on this case. And not just that, but consider the motives. What would a courier or a veterinarian want with such a device? Well, I do think that the lead that is most probable to be the culprit, based on what knowledge we have today, is the lab assistant. They may be a bit harder to track down. With that, I am open to possibilities. We may be able to tackle the other two in shorter time, rule them out entirely, and guarantee that the diligence we spend with the lab assistance is well worth it. What say you? Looking to Clark. Thanks for weighing in. So we'll start with the veterinarian. <laughs> the nicest Clark has ever been to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just takes one pepper of bardic inspiration to get Clark a little uh, bit nice. <laughs> can't say I trust any of them. Who's to say Gullivore isn't trying to lead us astray with that Vanifar lead anyways? I like the way you think, Alwyn. Upsetting though it is, there is a truth to the deception that lies within the average person. A seedy, despicable underbelly of ill intent. I think you're right to assume Clark is, like, far away by now. (laughs) (laughs) Are you guys coming or not? It seems our friend is in quite the hurry and can't say that they're wrong. Let's head I up. just kind of make a talking hand motion to ill bells <laughs> and walking away. Oh, and we're off. Okay, great. And Illipel will follow behind. I'll just say, as I catch up to Glork, we should find a place to rest for a minute, regroup our strength before we get into whatever lies in the beast havens. That's smart. You think I could uh, convince Illipel to pay for another set of hotel rooms? <laughs> yeah, I look. I look behind to Illipel. I just kind of quickly wink to Clork. Illipel is like catching up because they were chatting and overhears it and Illipel says, Well, I do believe you may be warming up to me, Clork, and I suppose I should extend a gratitude to you. So, yes, consider the next night on me. Though after that, I would like to see the guilt pact pay their due. Well, Illipel, he was just asking for a drink, but if you're going to pay for rooms again, why? I don't know what your end game is. Do you want a free drink of me as well? Between friends... There's always cause for celebration. You don't need to deceive. Simply ask. First round of drinks and the next hotel room on me. You're too kind, Illipel. Cool. Let's find a place to sit for a minute. Okay. 
you all level up for our next session you'll be level three that's where we'll end our session for tonight oh yeah Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato, that's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.